The following demonstration takes you step by step through the fabrication of organic solar cells. These devices are created by vacuum deposition of materials on a glass substrate. This method creates very even, ultra-thin layers of organic and metallic materials which serve as electrical contacts. In this case, several metal contacts are placed on a single piece of substrate so that multiple measurements can be made from a single fabrication run. The fabrication is completed within a vacuum chamber, which consists of a series of stainless steel chambers, organic sources that can be sealed and then evacuated. The organic solar cell is held by an internal arm and then maneuvered through different phases of fabrication. First, the apparatus is prepared. Crucibles are loaded with the organic chemicals that will be applied to the device. The crucibles are then inserted into the vacuum chamber and sealed. During deposition, aluminum is heated and atoms fly off, coating the inside of the chamber and the device. The source is slowly being used up in the process. Before we build a device, we need to load the aluminum into the metallics chamber. The lid can be opened and a piece of metal can be installed. The system is sealed. The entire chamber is pumped down and then refilled with nitrogen to atmospheric pressure. A boat, substrate, and required masks are loaded into the side of the glove box through a small airlock. This chamber is sealed, evacuated, and then refilled with nitrogen to atmospheric pressure. The inner door can then be opened and the objects moved into the glove box. These materials will never again contact atmospheric oxygen through the whole procedure. The fabrication of a solar cell begins with assembling a sample boat containing glass substrate that has been coated with indium tin oxide. The ITO is electrically conductive and transparent to light. We load the ITO into the ITO holder and place the organics mask over the ITO. The mask is held in place with set screws. The square aluminum mask holds the substrate and creates a sharply defined square where the organics layer can be deposited. The sample boat is loaded onto the extendable arm. The arm and boat are drawn into the vacuum portion of the apparatus. The gate valve is closed and the system is ready to be evacuated. This is the control center for building the devices. This switch controls the vacuum pumps, first a rough pump and then the turbo vacuum pump. There are two different vacuum gauges for low vacuum and high vacuum. At the next level is the temperature control for organic deposition. We control the currents and we read out the temperatures of the organics. Here is a quartz crystal monitor for the top electrode deposition. These are the organic sources. They have thermocouple temperature control so we can monitor the temperature. We have two current leads so we can control the current and thus the rate of deposition using a quartz crystal monitor. The organic is sitting in a crucible where it is heated and sublimes. It moves up away from the crucible into the chamber where they deposit on the substrate. After a vacuum of 5 times 10 to the minus 7 torr is achieved and the organic source has reached the desired temperature, we start the deposition process. We move the arm with the boat into the organics chamber and rotate downwards facing the organic crucibles. We monitor the deposition with the frequency counter. There is a quartz crystal inside the chamber which is coated with organics along with the device. As the thickness of deposit increase, the frequency of the crystal changes at a known amount depending on the molecules. This allows us to control the thickness of each organic layer precisely. After the organics have been deposited and allowed to cool, we need to change the mask for the aluminum contacts. The vacuum system is again vented with nitrogen at atmospheric pressure. The gate is open and the boat is moved back into the glove box. We first remove the screws and then the organic mask. You can see where the organics have been patterned onto the substrate. Then we put on top our aluminum mask and insert the set screws. The boat is again loaded onto the arm where it can be pulled back into the vacuum chamber. The deposition of the aluminum layer is very similar to the organic deposition. Two leads supply current to the boat containing aluminum. The aluminum moves up through the chamber, spreads out, and is deposited on the substrate through the mask. When the conductive coating has reached the desired thickness, it is ready for testing. The device is allowed to cool. The vacuum chamber is flooded with nitrogen and the device is moved to the glove box. 
Hi, I'm Erin Ratcliffe, postdoc at Neil Armstrong's group here at the University of Arizona. And I'm going to talk you through our testing system for our glove box for testing our solar cells. This is a glove box that has less than five parts per million concentration of oxygen and water in it and is an inert nitrogen atmosphere. Inside our glove box, we have our setup system, which involves a simulated sun light source, some optics to focus the lights, a filter wheel that controls different intensities of the light, and then a sample a holder and testing system. This is all run by a computer that will let you uh, visualize your data in real time. The mask is removed and the device is placed in the test apparatus. We transfer the device into the test holder. The ITO layer forms one continuous conductor, while the cable connector has gold pins that match up with each PV test contact point. The test mount is placed in the apparatus, and the cable is attached to the computer input jack. A high-intensity light source simulates sunlight. It is directed through the wheel containing several optic filters. The computer can select data from any of these test cells corresponding to each contact pin on the cable. The computer controls the light source and filter wheel so that a series of measurements at different current levels and color can be made. The computer builds a graph of current versus voltage.